Good morning, brand DIYers. It is a meh, okay kind of Friday here in Victoria. And once again, my head is getting cut off by my stupid webcam program. So what are we gonna do about that? Anyways, can't do anything about that. Um, I can back up a little bit, there we are. There, now you can see my full ugly mug in its splendor. I want to give you a little early Christmas present if you have um, not heard of a gentleman named Blair Enns. I am going to introduce you to the best book that you will ever own in your life. And it is called, if you can't read it, The Win Without Pitching Manifesto by a gentleman named Blair Enns. Let me tell you the story of Blair Enns and me. Now, I, I figured out how to adjust this. There we are. Okay, I don't have to stand like a like a giraffe uh, trying to drink from the stream anymore. Um, a few years ago, uh, I, was, I sold my uh, ad agency, Change Advertising, to uh, an innovation firm out of Chicago. And as part of that deal, I was told that a gentleman named Blair Enns was going to come and teach me how to pitch and how to position myself. And I thought, Oh my God, this is going to be such a waste of time. I was a creative director. I worked in advertising. I know everything there is to know about pitching and positioning. Turns out, I didn't know everything there is to know about pitching and positioning. Blair came in and over the course of a couple of days, he basically disassembled everything that I had ever learned in advertising about how to pitch yourself, pitch what you're offering, and close a deal. And here's Blair's story. Blair worked in Vancouver for a design firm, uh, design firm that everybody actually knew. I was, I knew their owners and stuff too. Um, and Blair ran the, the biz dev for that design firm. And every day, like most of us, Blair would feel like he needed a shower just to wash the ick off of himself. Because if you're pitching in an ad agency or design firm, you just feel icky. And the reason you feel icky is because you go out to clients and they say, all right, we might hire you, but we've lined up five other companies that we might hire. And we want you to pitch what's called spec work, speculative work, which is essentially give us all of your brains and all of your ideas and uh, create a whole bunch of free work. And then what we will do, we will pick the free work that we like, and then we will hammer the winning agency on price to negotiate the price down. And then we will work with that agency for a period of generally about 18 months. And if you know anything about pitching, the moment of maximum power for somebody pitching is when you're actually pitching. Because after that, what happens is the client starts to pay and the person who pays has the power. So inevitably, the, the, the curve goes like this. You have maximum power when you're pitching. You're saying, I have very valuable ideas. I'm going to negotiate a high price. And after you've negotiated that high price, what tends to happen is the relationship goes like this, where the client says, hey, if you want more money, you're going to listen to me more. You're going to create more ideas that are what I want to see. And you're going to have less control. And about 18 months after that happens, generally, the client says, you know what? You're too hard to work with and you charge too much money. I am going to create another pitch situation where I line up five of your friends and get them to pitch their free work. And I will repeat this grisly process again and again. And that is why if you work in advertising in biz dev or design like Blair did, uh, you want to take a shower at the end of every day because you feel icky because essentially you feel like a hoe. And that is what you are. You are basically giving it all up for free because you want a client to like you. And that's just not a nice position. Why does that happen? Because we in advertising and design tend to not value our ideas. And we have been forcing ourselves into positions where we go, you know what? We are not going to sell ourselves based on our results. We are not going to sell ourselves based on our accumulated expertise. We are only going to sell ourselves based on the strength of the pretty pictures that we draw and the great words that we write. And everybody knows that that is a very subjective thing to be pitching. 
and a client might like it or they might not like it. So we just say, please, please, please love our words and pictures. And we, ret we turn ourselves into what is essentially a commodity product. And that brings us to today's show because I just had a few coaching sessions the other day with small startups. And if you believe that what I just described is a situation that is unique to the service industry, like advertising, design, accounting, consulting, you name it, it is not. This is a situation that everybody finds themselves in. Now, my clients, the folks that I was coaching, they're small startups and they smell, they, they not smell, they sell products to bigger companies. And when you sell a product to a bigger company, an ingredient product, you can do it two ways. You can say, this is a commodity product, just like every other commodity product. And I'm going to try to sell it to you based on a reduced price and a great deal and a couple of other perks on the side. However, anybody knows if they have ever pitched a product based on a great price to a bigger company that you have zero power. The big company calls the shots. They say, we don't like your price. We want a cheaper price. You, we want more perks. We want you to do more stuff. Bend over backwards just a little bit further for us. Terrible, terrible position for you to be in as an entrepreneur and a founder selling a commodity. So this advice in this book doesn't just pertain to people in advertising and design or professional services, folks who are selling their services and potentially pitching their wares for free because they don't feel like they have enough faith in their own expertise or experience or results. This also has to do with founders and entrepreneurs who are pitching a product. Now I'm going to give you a couple of lessons that Blair Enns teaches in his book, Win Without Pitching. And I'm going to talk about how those lessons apply to entrepreneurs and founders, not just professional services. Lesson one, we will replace presentations with conversations. Anybody who has ever gone into a new business meeting with a PowerPoint deck with all the stuff that they can show off is going to be putting themselves into a losing position. You want to go into a presentation, if you even call it a presentation, you want to call it a conversation. You want to sit down with the potential client and have a conversation. So what are the problems that you're feeling? What's going wrong? How does that impact the other parts of your company? Huh? Now, if you could have somebody who solved all those problems, would that make you happy? Huh? That's interesting. Have you noticed I haven't pulled out a single PowerPoint slide yet? My entire presentation, usually when I start with a client and I did this just yesterday with a prospective client, my entire conversation is about how they're doing, what problems they're having, what the deeper problems are, what challenges they're facing, how does that imply, how does that apply or, or carry over into other parts of their business? How does that hurt their bottom line? What's the competition doing? I haven't said a single thing about what I'm good at yet. And that is the way you want it. You want to have a conversation. These are the challenges. Yep, we can fix that, huh? I'm not going to tell you how, because until I start getting paid, I'm not telling you how I fix. Lesson two, we will diagnose before we prescribe. Anybody who is excited about their product or about their expertise will listen to a client for about five seconds before they say, yeah, we got something for that. We got something for that. And they'll start showing off their product. It took me years and it took Blair ends too, telling me this because I was still doing it after 15 years in the business. It took me years to shut up. When a client starts talking about their problem, your first instinct is to jump up and say, we have a solution. You might think that by saying that the client will think that you're clever because it only took you five minutes to come up with a solution to their problem. This is the furthest thing from the truth. The client in most cases will think that you're an idiot they will think that you didn't properly think about their problem before jumping to a solution. 
and therefore they will devalue your solution. Imagine if uh, you were sitting in a meeting with Steve Jobs and uh, 1983 was the year and you were launching the Apple Macintosh computer and somebody at Chaya Day jumped up and said, yeah, we're gonna make a commercial that's just like 1984, the book by George Or Orwell, it's really, really great. They probably thought that in the room, they probably figured that out in the room, but they worked for weeks and months on the commercial and then presented it to Steve Jobs and, go, and went, this is what our labor came up with. It is genius. Steve Jobs then said, I appreciate that. If you jump up and offer an answer, whether it's a product or a service, right at the beginning, that right away devalues your expertise or your solution. Lesson three, we will rethink what it means to sell. Most of us don't like selling. The reason we don't like selling is because we feel that we are pitching a product or a service to a person. Personally, the way that I got to the feeling of, oh, I like selling, is by saying, I'm not gonna try to sell you anything. I wanna hear what's going on in your world. Everybody in the world likes to talk about themselves. If you call a prospective client and say, I, I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want to hear about how your life is, you know, because I've got a couple of things that I've been reading about your category and your sector. And uh, I'm wondering if that's true for you, because if it is, huh, that's a, that situation sucks. Uh, are you experiencing this, this, and this? If they are, then you just carry the conversation forward. They're going to think you're a genius because you just shut up and listen to them talk and bellyache. And then when we come back with a solution to all those belly aches, they'll think that we're a genius. They, we were listening to them. You have to rethink what it means to sell. You're not pitching at the beginning. You're listening at the beginning. Lesson number four, we will do with words what we used to do with paper. If you want to freak out a client in a presentation, don't bring a PowerPoint. Don't bring product, don't bring ads or design pieces or samples that you want to show them. Have a conversation. It will be the most disorienting thing and memorable thing they will ever encounter. And then when you have a conversation about what their challenges are, what their needs are, then you come back and say, you know what, I am going to actually write all this stuff down and I'm going to write about this way we can solve the challenge that you're having. And then we can agree that that was exactly what was in the conversation, right? Most of us, when it comes to pitching or selling or showing off our product, the client says to us, yeah, just send over, um, send over a proposal to me, will you? And we go, yes, sir. And then it's up to them. They have all the power. I don't like your proposal. You should never send a proposal. You should say to them, let's discuss what your challenges are, what our potential solution could be, what a potential price might be, and then you agree on everything verbally. And then your written piece merely is there to affirm what you just discussed. That way you can both come to an agreement and use the actual proposal just as confirmation that the communication was accurate. Lesson number five, we will be selective. You are the company that you keep. If you sell cheap to the lowest common denominator type clients, you will be perceived as cheap and you will be perceived as a low value offering. Enough said. And finally, and this isn't all the lessons in this book, mind you, but these are just the ones that I thought really apply to entrepreneurs and founders as well as service providers. The final lesson that I picked out we will build expertise rapidly. Everybody wants to know that they're not dealing with a barber shop who purports to be a surgeon. They want to know that they are dealing with the best surgeon in the world if it's an important operation. All right. You need to position yourself as an expert, but in order to be an expert, positioned as an expert, you got to be an expert. So how do you do that? It's very uncomfortable because it implies keeping on learning and pushing yourself, not just to sit back in your easy chair and relax, but to try new stuff, to dig into new stuff, 
to write books that you don't even know the content of and you have to research because when you've done the research and you've written the book, you become perceived as an expert in that subject matter. So you have to keep pushing yourself. How does that apply to product? It implies that you do a never ending process of customer discovery to keep making your product better and better and the process better and the subscription model better and the funnel better so that at every step the clients go, oh, I used to be annoyed by this thing, but you totally fix it. Well, that's because we listen to customers like you. Huh? Is that so? Wow. You guys really must care. Huh? I like the way you do business. So there you go. Replace presentations with conversations. Diagnose before you prescribe. Rethink what it means to sell. Do with words what you used to do with paper. Be selective in the company you keep and build expertise rapidly. These are all lessons courtesy of Blair N's Win Without Pitching Manifesto. Buy the book. It's the best Christmas gift that you will ever give yourself. And that is the show for today. I hope you have yourselves a fantastic weekend. I will link Blair N's book in the show notes here and start practicing this stuff and tell me if it doesn't make you walk a little bit taller and feel a little bit better about the products and services you're offering. Have a great one.